Welcome or welcome back to Three Inquisitive Kids. This is our last lesson in the Chapter 5 or Unit 5 of the 7th grade math course. So in this lesson, we will be learning about linear equation, equations in more money-related word problems. Learning goals for today. Use tables to accurately analyze the quantitative relationships in word problems and indirectly set the variable. Accurately identify the equivalent relationship and list equations to solve word problems. Solving quantity allocation problems. A cultural and art group organized a charity performance as a fundraising. A total of a thousand tickets were sold. Wow, that is a lot. Raising a total of, how much are they charging for these? Okay, so anyway, they raised a total of $69,500. How many adult tickets and student tickets were sold? We also know that adult each adult ticket is costing $80 and each student ticket costs $50. Well, what is the equivalent relationship in this question? We have two. Our first one is the number of adult tickets sold plus, yep, that's right, the number of student tickets sold is equal to a thousand total tickets. And the second one is the money from the adult tickets plus the money from the student tickets is equal to $69,500. So here would be the solution. Let's first set the number of student tickets sold as X. And then from this we get there are X, X student tickets sold, 1,000 minus X uh, tickets sold. So you might just make this Y because it is another unknown. But think of a way that you can represent this value with the variable we have already set. So this is another way to do it, 1,000 minus X. The total money gained from student tickets would be 50X, and from the adults, it would be 80 times 1,000 minus x. So according to equation number 2, we have 50x plus 80 times 1,000 minus x is equal to 69,500. Solved, x is equal to 350. So therefore, 350 student tickets were sold and 650 adult tickets were sold. Now think of, about this. Can other variables be set? Because remember, at the beginning of this lesson, we talked, in the learning goals, we talked about indirectly setting the variable. Sometimes what the question is asking you is not the variable that you should be setting. Or maybe you're being asked multiple things. Then what other variables can you set to make this more, more simple? Or depending on your, what, what fits your way of thinking um, and your way of solving problems, what is the best type of variable to be set? Well, why don't you set the money made from student tickets as Y dollars? So here it is the number of tickets sold. Here is the amount of money made from those tickets. Again, we have the same values, but represented in a different way. So the number of student tickets sold would be Y divided by 50. And the adult tickets sold would be 69,500 minus Y divided by 80. The money made from student tickets would be shown as Y, and the, the money made from adult tickets would be shown as 69,500 minus Y. So equation, according to equation number two, we get Y divided by 50 plus 69,500 minus Y divided by 80 is equal to 1,000. So here we are using the same formula, we're using that same equivalent relationship, but the variables that we are setting is different. So we're just setting, or just first, we're really the only thing that changed was the value we found first. Because in the end, we were going to substitute the value of y into these different, these four different values anyway. So solved, we have y is equal to 17,500. Therefore, they sold 650 adult tickets and 350 student tickets. So we still end up with the same answer as before. Method summary. One, when the problem encountered is more complex and contains two unknowns and two equivalent relationships, 
one variable can be set and the other unknown can be expressed as an algebraic formula containing the previous variable. So what this is saying is you only have to set one variable, but both of those unknowns can be represented with this variable. Another equivalent relationship can be used to list equations. Okay, number two. Tables can be used to show the relationships between various quantities in word problems. So a lot of the times you're given multiple, um, so many different pieces of information in word problems. And if you don't slow down and really think about which value um, corresponds to what, then you're not going to be able to find the variable you want to set and then solve properly. So tables are a very useful tool when it comes to analyzing word problems. Three, choose the appropriate variables to solve for. So sometimes you may choose a variable and it doesn't really matter to the question or it just makes things much more complicated than it needs to be. So sometimes you, there are multiple variables that you, can, that you can solve for and they all work, but sometimes there is a more appropriate variable that you should be setting and then solving. Discuss. If this so the exact same problem as before, except if the ticket prices remain the same, is it so the ticket prices of the adult and student tickets remain the same? Is it possible that a thousand tickets will be sold for $69,300 three, $69, $69, and why? Why or why not? So first, let's set the amount of student tickets sold as X tickets, meaning that the amount of adult tickets sold as a thousand minus x tickets. From this, we get 50x plus 80 times a thousand minus x is equal to 69,300. Solved, x is equal to 1,070 divided by 3. But x represents the amount of tickets sold, and you can't have a fraction of a ticket sold. That wouldn't make sense. Therefore, this would be impossible. Exercise. If you change a total of 1,000 tickets sold in this question to 300 more adult tickets than student tickets, how many adult tickets and student tickets were sold, and how would you solve this? So think about this for a moment. If the question didn't give you 1,000 tickets sold, it just told you that 300 more adult tickets were sold than student tickets, how would you solve this? All right, so after you've thought over it and pondered it for a few minutes. Let's see what is the solution that this this slideshow has for us. We first set the amount of student tic tickets sold as x tickets, and the amount of adult tickets sold as x plus 300 tickets. So we know 50x plus 80 times x plus 300 is equal to 69,500. Solved, x is equal to 350. And then you add that 300 to x, so we find the amount of adult tickets sold. So our answer is they sold 350 student tickets and 650 adult tickets. So here is our conclusion from these problems. We start with the word problem. And then after thinking about it abstractly, and then we start finding the equivalent relationships, we turn it into a mathematical problem containing linear equations. Out of these linear equations, we can then solve, getting us a solution to these equations. Now, not all solutions are the answer. Not all solutions to these linear equations would be the direct answer to the word problem. You have to check if it answers the question properly, if you have the unit, and you have to verify it. And then you can answer the word problem. These are the steps to solving word problems with linear equations in them. Example one, let's do some problems now, now that we just went over that, that method conclusion. A 360 meter long river channel regulation task was handed over to, to two engineering teams, A and B, to complete it in succession. So what this means in succession is so A would work on part of it, team A would work on one section of it, and then right after it would be succeeded by team B. So team B would continue working on it. They are not working it at, on the same time, but one after the other. 
So it would be first A and then next B. It took 20 days total to be completed. Every day the teams A and B remediate 24 and meters and 16 meters respectively. So they work on 24 meters and 16 meters respectively each day. So we're being asked, how much did the two engineering teams of A and B each remediate in this entire project? Now we're gonna do this together. First, let's analyze this problem. What are the equivalent relationships? We know that the work time of team A plus the work time of team B is equal to 20 days. And the completed length of team A plus the completed length of team B is equal to 360 meters. So again, here's our solution. We first set the, the total amount that team A has rehabilitated as X meters and the total amount that team B has rehabilitated as 360 minus X meters. Now we have X divided by 24 plus 360 minus X divided by 16 is equal to 20. Solved, X is equal to 120. Therefore, 360 minus X is equal to 240. So our answer is engineering team A rehabilitated a 120 meter river course and team B rehabilitated a 240 meter river course. Practice. A factory needs to process a batch of parts and plans to process 240 parts per day. So this is their plan, which can be completed on schedule. Now they have new technology, more advanced technology. So now 40 more parts can be processed each day and the task can be completed two days ahead of the schedule. So find out how many total parts need to be processed in this that, that are required to be processed. Now I want you to think about this for a moment. The two, so the plan versus what actually happened were different, right? The ways this factory completed, so you can essentially think of this word problem as giving us two different ways to complete the processing of this batch of parts. But what does not change in both of these scenarios is the total number of parts that is in this batch. This is the total number of parts that does not change. So that could be, you can think of that as a base for setting your equation. So I want to pause the video actually, and I want you to solve this on your own first, and then we're gonna go over the solution together. All right, so let's look at the analysis. Set the total number of parts needed to be processed as X, and the amount of days needed to process to complete on schedule as X divided by 240 days. The amount of days it actually needed to complete this task would be x divided by 240 plus 40 days. So here's our solution. Let the total number of parts in this batch as x parts. So now we have the equation x divided by 240 minus x divided by 240 plus 40 is equal to 2. Solved, x is equal to 3360. Answer. There is a total of 3,360 parts that is needed to be processed in this batch of parts. Class summary. Here, are, here is the general steps to listing equations in word problems. So again, we start with the word problem through thinking about its equivalent relationships, so finding those, and then thinking about it more abstractly. We transform it into a mathematical problem, which we can think about what, so it, so turning it, it into a way in which we can think about easier and we can solve easier. So and then, so we have linear equations out of this word problem. We solve, we have the solution, and then we need to check if the solution properly answers the problem. If not, we change it. If it does, we still need to check it before answering the word problem. The two very important skills we learn from this lesson is to use tables to accurately analyze the quantitative relationships in the word problem and to indirectly set the variable. Now, this is very, very important, indirectly setting the variable. A lot of the times, the word problems that you encounter, do, you might not need to set the variable as the exact value that is being asked for, 
but another value hidden in the problem. So you really need to be sharp and you need to find and identify that hidden value that you are willing to solve for and then maybe substitute to find the actual answer. And the second skill we learned today is to accurately identify the equivalent relationships and list equations based off of these equivalent relationships to solve word problems. So that wraps up unit five of the seventh grade math lessons. Um, um, so yeah, that wraps up chapter five. And we learned all about linear equations, linear equations in word problems, solving linear equations, properties of linear equations. Those are all the things that we covered in this chapter. Now, linear equations is a very important topic that you should be mastering around this level. It's very important to, um, to you as you develop further knowledge on algebra. So this is a very basic and important skill for you to have in order to build off of later on. So thank you so much for watching through Inquisitive Kids, and I'll see you next.